conducting and the report has been created in collaboration with Trilophilia. You would agree with me that over the course of last few weeks, we have seen a lot of movement in the travel ecosystem. We have also witnessed a lot of webinars which Fiki has been pioneering to promote the knowledge and information around what's happening in the post-COVID world. But you would also agree that most of these sessions have been focused around travel ecosystem, travel intermediaries, and the travel supplier side of the things, right? But at the same time, it's equally important to look at the consumer patterns and behaviors, because ultimately we're all here to deliver a superior experience to the consumer. Now, the life of a consumer uh, is, is changed significantly in light of what's happening in the post-lockdown world order with social distancing in place, new hygiene standards, safety and compliance measures. If we are able to understand the consumer preferences in the right way, this would also help in drafting uh, the new uh, policy, which is coming around in a few weeks from now. It will also help the travel intermediaries and the support ecosystem to be better ready to take on the consumer in the post-COVID world. The survey, which is going to be unveiled shortly by our Honorable Chief Guest, was conducted in October 2020 by Philophilia in collaboration with Siki. The survey had more than 5,000 participants which digitally filed the survey and it covered various aspects of the time of travel, the type of travel, accommodation preferences, destination preferences, and what kind of travel experiences is the consumer looking at in the post-COVID world. So I'm sure you will really love uh, the, the report findings and the key takeaways which we have prepared which our chief guest is going to unveil shortly. But before I welcome her, uh, you know, I just want to take this opportunity to lay down some of the amazing work which Vicky has been doing during this lockdown. There have been several webinars which Vicky has conducted. Vicky has also done various industry recommendations and white papers, which were submitted to central and state government for survival and revival of travel and tourism industry. Various industry interactions have been planned with several state tourism departments. Siki also repeat, uh, re, you know, released the report with Grant Thornton on tourism scenario and recommendations for future. Siki partnered with Google to conduct workshops for travel MSMEs to educate them on the power of digital tools to stay relevant during this pandemic. It was also organized a, a tourism e-conclave, which many of you would have participated, which was inaugurated by Sri Perras Singh Patel, Honorable Tourism Minister. Siki, uh, in the last event, few weeks prior, also started a travel startup accelerator series to encourage entrepreneurship and innovation in the space of travel and tourism, following the vision of Honorable Prime Minister towards an Atma Nirbhar Bharat. So Fiki has been in the thick and thin of things uh, to support the ecosystem. Uh, and it's my privilege to welcome now Sri Dilip Chinoyji, Secretary General Fiki, to give a welcome address to all of us. Thank you, uh, Karthik, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Shivati uh, Ravinder Brar, additional uh, Director General, Ministry of Tourism. Welcome again. We were together at the weekend. Uh, Ashish, uh, Co-Chairman, Tiki Travel and Technology uh, Committee. A very warm welcome uh, to you. Uh, to uh, Chitra uh, Gurnani, Co-Founder and CEO of Thrillophobia. First, fantastic name of the company. And second, thank you for partnering us uh, in this uh, survey uh, and we look forward to your uh, presentation and of course Karthik uh, who is going to moderate the session all other officials and members of the Fiki Tourism Committee my colleagues Manish and Samanda who have uh, and Anirban who have uh, joined us and also Mandeep who is quietly working in the back back end so a very warm welcome to the launch of the Fiki Consumer Survey on Travel Tourism and Hospitality I think what led to it and Ms. Bra you were squarely responsible for this if I can say, at one of the events that we were addressing us, you said, you know, who is actually figuring out what the customer or the consumer wants? And rather than looking at only recommendations to government, how, why don't you think of something proactive uh, and which could actually help uh, industry uh, to, you know, going forward and help uh, government also and form a kind of a basis. So therefore, we talked about this survey um, it was designed in conjunction and we got a lot of feedback from different people who wanted questions to be addressed differently, uh, things that were left out. And I want to really thank Chitra and her team for being so uh, responsive. Uh, I, like Karthik said, I will not uh, go into the findings of the survey and that would be presented by Chitra 
and uh, later after you unveil uh, this uh, uh, the survey but you know everything that was being done now was at the supply uh, side so through this consumer survey we are trying to look at the demand side which also may be useful to the policy makers industry stakeholders to reimagine and remodel themselves to meet these expectations and try and how to be actually survive thrive and revive and as uh, over the weekend you know one of the things you said that everybody has to pivot their business and innovate uh, to the needs of the customer and the consumer so this is our little uh, effort in actually enabling that uh, to happen so this, the findings are very interesting it is about willingness of people it is about where they want to go what are their preferences what are the uh, preferred destinations uh, and of course uh, you know are there any special things that could be done so i'm being very careful to tread a line and not actually reveal the findings but again uh, talk about what is uh, and of course after the event the other findings and detail on the choices of preference of the traveler within this survey could be downloadable from the fiki website and you know clicking the publication thing but again Uh, to you ms brar a very very special and warm welcome you have been a constant uh, you know motivator and a person who's always looking at us to enable to look at the future uh, thank you for being with us there thank you anish for for uh, leading this uh, effort and also a very warm welcome to uh, chitra very warm welcome to everybody who's listening in i don't know what the uh, the viewership is normally the tourism seminar doesn't talk anything less than 3000 to 4000 people uh, but uh, to all of them out there a very very warm welcome and thank you and back to you kartik thank you dilip ji uh, for those uh, you know insights and and the way you have laid out the lay of the land for this uh, survey report finding and next uh, it's my personal pleasure to invite uh, the gentleman who has been very thoroughly involved in the coming out of this report and apart from this report in general all the initiatives which fiki has been doing in the travel ecosystem and in his personal capacity as well uh, i know how he has been championing the cause of uh, promoting entrepreneurship and supporting msmes in the travel and tourism ecosystem to to foster innovation during these tough times so uh, with this a very warm welcome to you uh, mr ashish kumar co chairman fiki travel technology committee and thought leader i would request you to kindly share your address with us yeah thank you uh, thank you karthik uh, welcome rupender ji and thank you dilip um if i say anything more really as like mr chenoy said i might be treading on to the report uh, but to cut a long story short consumer study and the tenets of consumer behavior has been the core of any travel and tourism study because not only not only because the consumer forms the entire consumer journey from right from the time he decides to venture out of his home to the way he searches how he looks how he books how he consumes his holiday and in the end of course the experiences he carries back home so therefore in many ways consumer understanding is 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 a very important pillar to this this is pre covid but come covid these tenants get further magnified because to my mind three major impacts which come into the study is is the the understanding of what is safe and what is unsafe that forms a pillar in 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 a consumer behavior pattern the second of course is is a clear definition between an essential versus non essential people are deciding is it essential for me to do this or non essential for me to do that and the third and the most vital aspect is is the various regulatory and the government uh, situation in terms of rules regulations lockdowns uh, and and you don't even want a situation where you the governments open up too fast like they said one step forward two step backwards and we have seen that in various countries in our own study so therefore when we are studying consumer behaviors one must bear in mind that these three pillars do form a very important aspect of behavior going forward lastly of course why is it essential um, to understand consumer behavior a 
it fosters the pipeline, the support pipeline in terms of investment, which needs to go in, in terms of destination, which needs to come in. And more importantly, investment today in something which is a given. Uh, I don't think it even requires a discussion, which is technology and digitalization. So therefore, the customer footprint, uh, right from the time he leaves his home, or rather he thinks of leaving his home, to the time he comes back and starts getting to his, his own, are data points which need to be mapped digitally and in a technology-driven environment as much as possible to, to give him that experience. So without uh, further thoughts on this, my own thoughts are that fundamentally the consumer behavior might not have changed, but what he's looking for is something more than a transactional experience. And, and, and that is probably we will get down to be seeing in this report. So Karthik, over to you for the next one. Thank you, Ashish ji. And now uh, it is my honor to, to welcome our, our chief guest, Srimati Rupinder Bharaji, Additional Director General, Ministry of Tourism, Government of India to uh, kindly release the survey titled The New Normal in Travel, a survey on consumer travel preferences in light of COVID-19. Uh, Honorable Nam, if I may request you to, to click and release the report. Okay, so there goes the report. Right. Thank you, Thank, thanks ma'am. And now, uh, if I may request, and of course, we would have uh, uh, addressed by ma'am shortly. But before that, if I may request uh, Chitra Gudani ji, co-founder and CEO of Trilophilia. And I'm sure all of you are aware of Trilophilia. It's one of the largest online platform for booking travel experiences worldwide. They have more than 3 million users in 160 plus destinations and more than 25,000 travel experiences. So I'm sure with the sample size of more than 5,000 participants, the survey findings are in many ways reflective of the general consumer trend and mood in the country. So over to you, Chitraji. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, Karthik, for the welcome. Good evening, everybody. It's been a very exciting journey in preparing this report and finding the answers from consumers on those questions. Let me quickly take you through the survey and the demographics of the participants who responded to it. So the survey uh, was included a lot of questions around what do the travelers want to do? When do they want to travel? How they want to travel? What is concerning them when they travel? What do they want to actually do when they travel? How far they want to travel, right? When do they want to travel? So a lot of things around that and very interesting insights have come out of it. We've got responses from 5,000 plus participants from uh, metro cities, from tier one and tier two cities, men and women both. And uh, a, an interesting insight about the age group is also here. 32% uh, of people who responded were between 26 to 35, 34% between 15 to 25, 26% between 35 to 50, and 8% above 50. So a very good uh, overall uh, distribution amongst all the age groups. Give us an overall reflective picture of what the traveler is looking at. Now, let me quickly take you through the first and the most important thing here. Reason for the first trip post pandemic. 43% people said that they need a weekend break. And 30% said they're bored of working from home and they want to work between nature now. Very interesting point. 73% travelers are excited to just step out of home for a weekend or to work amongst nature. Between November to March, which is in the next five months, 87% of respondents are planning their first post-pandemic trip. A very interesting insight. So people are not really willing to wait for a long time now. Most of the people preferred taking a flight as a very comfortable option. If you look at the people who are uncomfortable, it is just 22% who are uncomfortable with taking a flight. Vis-a-vis -vis traveling in a train, we still have around 50% who express discomfort. It's very similar statistics when you compare traveling in a bus to traveling in a private taxi. So it's indicating that people are preferring to travel in private vehicles or a safer option, which is a flight. If I look at the preferred activities chosen by the people over the course 
it has come out that staying at a hotel is considered comfortable very comfortable so there are just 14% people who actually expressed discomfort in staying in a hotel on similar lines only 15% expressed a little bit of discomfort while dining at a restaurant however we even still see that attending a concert or a sport event or a convention or a trade show there is somewhat some discomfort amongst the travelers and it will take some time i think a couple of more months 3 to 6 months these numbers would change very interesting things have come out how people are preferring to travel enhanced hygiene protocols safety guidelines a lot of emphasis is being given to these things people are preferring to be in the outdoors and do outdoor activities versus indoor space events a very interesting data point here 65% of respondents said that they are comfortable traveling outside of their states via flight or self drive or taxis so a very important insight that i find here is that state is not a boundary anymore it's not that i just want to take my vehicle and move out to 200 kilometers or 100 kilometers in my state but people have reached a point where they are comfortable moving out of the state going to travel destinations but how is changing so they may not prefer to take a train or a bus but they will prefer to do it via a flight or a taxi or do a self drive so the how has changed this is all degree hotels to shared hostel to actually a larger chunk of audiences preferring to take stays in luxury or deluxe category because they are deemed to be safer and more hygienic and a large chunk of people are preferring home stays or boutique villas entire unit to their group what they what that means is it's a private stay which is meant for their small group again a focus moving to a post in the post covid era moving to privacy and more hygiene and more safety 90% of respondents are choosing to stay in places which are away from car crowds into the mountains on the beaches in the villages or in the jungles if you look at the the graph only 3% people are choosing to travel to big cities and i think uh, this is also a very interesting fact there were times when people were choosing big cities for travel but right now of being being close to nature is the mantra preferred travel experiences very interesting again um, so 22% people said they are willing to take regular local experiences but with safety precautions 21% people said that they want to do the adventure activities which are far from crowd 16% said that they want to do sightseeing but in a private way so if we look at the data it, it's coming out very clearly that pe people are opening up they want to do everything now they don't want to remain restricted but yes safety is an important factor staying in their own group is another important factor being doing things very privately in their own group is is the highlight here yes this is also quite similar 77% of respondents said they would prefer traveling in their small close group of family friends or relatives we jab if i look back pre covid era solo travel was growing big time join a group tour was one of the top sellers on thrillophilia honestly speaking i mean every weekend there were thousands of people going on group tours with us over a weekend so this this is going to change and the entire product line of group tours will change for the next many many months a very interesting data point 33% people said they will travel to wise in 2021 of what they traveled in 2019 very exciting so people have erased 2020 from the travel history and they want to cover it up in 2021 very interesting this is a very exciting number for the travel industry as we see mindful travel is going to rise people are going to prefer to travel to one destination and enjoy it to the fullest rather than rushing up to multiple destinations 
safety concerns is on the top of the mind and it's reflecting when they choose transportation also most people are comfortable or very less concerned at airports or in airplanes versus in trains or in roadways buses eating at a restaurant the concerns are quite low eating in the streets concerns are quite high while shopping or visiting attractions monuments and parks people have started becoming comfortable 60 more than 60% of travelers were barely stressed about doing these things expectations from the state government have also come out 62% of travelers expect the government to provide clear information specify rules and updates on the website and provide a dedicated travel app which gives them all this information handy with more and more and more people planning and resuming their travel plans in the coming days i think travel industry will be the one that's going to boom big time in 2021 more than 43% travelers are okay to resume travel as the cases drop to 50k mark very interesting number we are already below 50k mark which means more than 43% people are mentally okay to travel today and as we move under 30k the balance 57% are also excited to travel so i think uh, a vast majority of travelers certainly have been financially impacted by covid-19 which has affected their ability to travel but psychologically everybody wants to travel more everybody wants to do a lot more than what they've done in the past and that makes the entire thing very very exciting to me the biggest exciting number was that 33% of people said that in 2021 they would travel twice of what they did in 2020 it's just the way is changing we need to focus on more private departures to focus on people traveling their own small groups groups people ensuring more safety traveling in private vehicles looking at safer modes of stay safer modes of travel and doing activities more in the outdoors which are considered to be more safe i think if 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 those things are changed uh, that's how the traveler wants the whole scenario to be thank you for, for everybody for listening to me and over to you karthik thanks uh, chitra ji and i think just like everybody else for me the biggest takeaway was that 2021 travel is going to be double of what it was in 2019 and i can see man is also smiling listening to that number so i think that's a fantastic news uh, from this survey uh, chitra ji and now uh, you know again it's my honor to welcome uh, ma'am again but before i do that i just want to uh, take a couple of minutes to share with all of you that while we all have been campaigning towards or or sort of canvassing towards getting more support from the government for the industry uh, you know ma'am and her department has been working tirelessly uh, as i'm sure most of you know we had the luxury of working from home but all the government officials have been working tirelessly in the office for us and uh, a host of initiatives have been taken by the tourism department we are all aware of dekho apna desh webinars that was so successfully conducted recently you might be aware of the tourist facilitation center facility in kerala under the prashad scheme which was inaugurated virtually the scheme was launched back in 2015 for integrated development of pilgrimage and heritage destinations so the work is going on in that ministry of tourism recently also partnered with the quality council of india to launch the sathi initiative for hotel which is the system for assessment awareness training for hospitality industry which is again aligned to honorable prime minister's uh, call for atmanirbhar bharat Uh, the recently the national tourism policy draft was also shared and the feedback is being seek from the state government so a lot of work is happening by by our department although ma'am we know that demand keeps getting pushed to you but we so very well appreciate the kind of work which is being done and uh, a few words about our honorable chief guest uh, rupinder baraj ji additional uh, dg ministry of tourism she is the 1990 uh, cadre of uh, indian revenue services and she has served in various assignments across india Uh, in in departments of international taxation corporate taxation tax administration and citizen services division and uh, recently 
she is now part of the tourism department we are really honored to have you uh, with us ma'am and can i please uh, humbly request you to share a few words with us thank you thank you kartik and a very good evening to dilip and uh, ashish and thank you fikki and thank you chitra for uh, bringing out some very very interesting elements uh, out of this report and i'm so glad that fikki has gone ahead and taken on the initiative of picking out what is it that's going to really fuel demand in times to come because and i'm glad dilip that we had that interaction where this came up you know it's a continuous learning i think for all of us that how does one deal with unprecedented situation that covid has thrown and so very happy it actually did sound like music to the ears when chitra read out the last part of it that most people are looking at uh, traveling more than double so whatever quota we've missed out of travel this year we got to catch it up with vengeance right and what is even more heartening i think to know is that uh, people seem to have therefore a faith that it is safe to travel and they would not be saying that response if they did not have faith in all the systems that are being created whether through the government initiatives whether through civil society or whether through the private uh, enterprises all of the sectors have to get together to deal with the pandemic but what is also i think offering a silver lining in all this is the fact that somewhere even though right now the industry got so very impacted but in a sense it also gave time to the industry to just step back it was forced to slow down and it gave time to introspect and i think therefore delving into the customers demands became a very important imperative need and then what is it that the customers really looking for in times to come i mean i'm sure we all do customer surveys even otherwise but this moment pushed us to do that even more and therefore the initiative that fiki took in reaching out to 5000 plus people i think that's a fantastic sample size to pick up and therefore if the percentages that you have read out and they are all very encouraging weekend trips 43% timings from november to march pretty much most people looking like traveling and dining out you know it is so encouraging to see that people are happy to dine out also very happy to see that people are saying we we'll go and stay in hotels we wouldn't just go and stay with a friend or family so i think these are very encouraging trends coming and your report itself should send a cheer in the market and i think we should give it great publicity because it will create both the sense of confidence that if there are so many of my fellow citizens who are feeling confident to travel then if i'm a fence sitter then i'll be just that much more encouraged to travel so i think it's a wonderful uh, timing of the report as the unlockdowns are further sort of relaxing the protocols are more and more coming in place it's it's an excellent timing for the report so i congratulate fiki for bringing that out and to everybody else who is listening i would definitely like to emphasize that the industry as well as if we see from the angle of the civil aviation and the airport authority of india the airports have been very well equipped to deal with the whole pandemic the public spaces are very well managed if you go to monuments the kind of spacing that is being done in terms of the uh, spacing of ticketing the crowd management in most of the places is being very well done but of course at the end of the day it's about all of us and all of us who travel must definitely still respect the protocols because indeed the numbers are coming gradually down and very encouraging trends coming on that account also but that it still doesn't allow us to be complacent so when we head out and when we resume our travels we must respect the protocols that have been put in place do wear your mask and keep washing your hands and do maintain that 6 uh, feet of distance and i'm sure we'll be traveling and uh, seeing the lovely places that india offers and on that in, you know i would also like to say that i think in some ways it's very interesting even though a lot of us are being pushed to travel within india because right now international travel is not even happening and a lot of us would feel insecure in traveling too far away from our home countries but it's also therefore affording a great opportunity both to the industry to bring forth the lesser known itineraries to bring forth such beautiful splendor that india is and it's also offering to all of us as citizens to explore india in a very different way and believe me and i i don't just say this because i am working in the ministry of tourism today 
but also as someone who does bring the Dekho Apna Desh webinar every Saturday. And because we bring an episode, we do do a lot of research with the people who bring forth these ideas, 63 of them. And it's, it's like being on a roll. There's just so much to showcase. And what is very heartening and encouraging to see that for a lot of places where we used to have an apprehension that, okay, you know what, I'm going to go get there, see the place, but is it enough for me to stay there? Or are the roads good enough? Or how do I even, you know, manage the other things? Or, okay, ek cheez kar lunga, what else is there for me to do? But what is very encouraging in a lot of places that whether you wanted to go and see a religious place, whether you want to go for an adventure, whether you go, want to go trekking, whether you go rafting, whether you want to just go chill in a nature park, whether you want to go spot the tiger, whether you want to generally go around walking in a city and looking at all the heritage, whether you want to see the monuments, because I can see a lot of uh, respondents have favored going to monuments. It's a great time. It's a great time to just see incredible India. It's uh, the road connectivity has improved tremendously over the last few years. And uh, it, it makes us proud to see that we have after the USA, we are the second largest country with the road network. And the number of airports in the country are more than 130, I think 136 airports. So I think it's really for us to utilize all the infrastructure and to leverage the inherent strength that India has. There is so much supply and there is so much demand. And so there's so much potential on either side. And if we can get the right engine going, there's no reason why either the suppliers or the consumers should be short on choices. So I'm so glad that you've come with this report and encourage you to do many more such uh, initiatives, which create a dialogue, which create a dialogue for the consumers. And we learn more and more from such initiatives that you do. And it helps us also to tailor our way forward. So once again, all the best to everyone who joined in this initiative. Keep doing good work. And I'm sure we can take Incredible India very beautifully forward. Thank you, Fiki, once again. And thank you, Karthik. Thank you so much, uh, Srimati Bharadji, Additional Director General, Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, for your kind words. And uh, may I now request uh, Ashish Ji again, Co-Chairman, Fiki Travel Technology Committee, to uh, deliver the vote of thanks and the closing address. Right. So, yes, uh, indeed, thank you, Rupinder Ji, for being here with us today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dilip Chanai. And of course, the amazing work which continues to be get put by Manish and Anirban, and the team at FIKI. But I have to say one thing in conclusion, that it gives me a very eerie feeling. I have been involved with two global consumer survey reports, one done by Deloitte globally, which, which catered to European and US travelers. And I was part of it in some manner. And another one known as Buzz Travel Technology Platform, which is again, island based and a huge uh, leveraging of, of consumer understanding. And what I conclude here, looking at this report, that consumer behavior worldwide is probably meshing with each other. It's, it's the people in Europe are looking at the same things as people in India and so on and so forth. And, and there's a phase I use, uh, we, we say ecosystem of travel and, and Karthik knows that when the pandemic came in, I started using a phaseology known as the universe of travel. And I'm now beginning to believe more and more that the universe of travelers are the same, really, at heart. And if we are able to draw strategies around with this universe of travel, I think we will have a complete end-to-end -end strategy, both in terms of our domestic tourism, of course, and in terms of inbound or outbound uh, travel, and of course, the other aspects of travel. So thank you uh, and, and, and very much for putting this through, and happy uh, to have you in the GA Thank you so much, Ashish ji. Thank you again, ma'am, for joining in. Thanks, Chandra, Dilip ji, and the entire Fiki team. Please do not forget to download the report from the Fiki website. Uh, you can find it under the publication section. And, and, and once again, thanks everyone for joining in. And have a great evening ahead. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.